And I'm joined in studio by Michael McNamara, Independent TD and Chair of the COVID-19 Committee. Um, Michael, what do you make of, of what's going on around this? On the one hand, we have uh, government ministers telling us they're preparing green lists for safe, uh, safe places to travel. And on the other hand, we have the Chief Medical Officer saying cancel your holidays. Well, I mean, you know, you have government ministers are empowered to make law, um, you know, in in accordance with the the act. That's unusual, but they're empowered because of the specific circumstances to make law. And then you have the chief medical officer who makes recommendations. And I mean, that's the way it's always been. I mean, you have a chief medical officer who makes recommendations to the government and who makes recommendations to the public. Um, And that's how it is now. And then the government make law. And the law is that you are allowed to travel. It would be very difficult to prevent people from leaving, legally to prevent people from, from, from leaving Ireland in accordance with European Convention on Human Rights uh, requirements, mm. in accordance with EU law requirements. But whatever about banning travel <coughs> altogether, what about the confused messaging that we're getting here from what, on the one hand, as you mm. say, the Chief Medical Officer saying, don't travel, and the government saying, here's a list, a, gre- a green list um, of countries that we're working on, we'll, we'll have them to you by next week. Well, I suppose we've had that kind of confusion f- for months now between what is lawful but is, and what is, is recommended. Enough? Oh, it's not good enough, but it's never been good enough. I mean, even here in RTE, we've had people saying you, to elderly people, you are not allowed to leave your home. You are now allowed to leave your home. El- people over 70, there was never any specific law for people over 70 or over 65 or under any age. Uh, people were never banned from leaving their home. There were recommendations that they not do so. But there was a confusion from the start between what was law and what was a medical recommendation. And I think it was a, a bad thing because it, people, some people felt that they were breaking the law by leaving okay, their so own home. OK, so how would you propose to resolve this then? Because we heard from Jack Lambert this morning, who is Professor of Medicine, that he believes the Chief Medical Officer's advice is too broad. You can't just say to people, don't travel at all. He said there are countries that are safe to travel to. Is the Chief Medical Officer overstepping the mark? No, I mean, the Chief Medical Officer is giving medical advice in good faith. I mean, the Chief Medical Officer it tells people that they shouldn't smoke and it's very clear that smoking is very bad for you uh, and it has very serious medical repercussions yet people continue to do so and tobacco continues to be sold in our shops. But I suppose, you know, we had the SME recovery sector in yesterday and they were talking about, you know, the government is going at some stage to have to compensate uh, businesses, particularly small businesses, the big, the Googles, the Facebooks, the the Intels, they'll survive. But the small family run businesses, particularly in the hospitality sector, are going to the wall as we speak. And there's going to be a a, a tourism package, I think, as part of the July stimulus. Sure, but that's the domestic issue. But I'm wondering what you would say to Siobhan, Michael, who has texted in, who has saved up for seven years for a foreign holiday. What would you say to her? I think the government should look at compensating people like Siobhan if they have spent money to go abroad and they decide not to based on the medical advice the chief medical officer, I think the government should look at compensating them or at least giving them a voucher to spend to the value of their money that they've lost to spend in Ireland. I think that's what the government should do. I'm not in the government. I'm not in a position, no more than the chief medical officer is in a position to do. I'm not in a position to tell the government what to do. The government will make decisions based on all the advice it receives, including, of course, the chief medical officers. Michael, just on on the compensation fund um, idea, do you have any idea how much that will cost? Any idea? I, I, I don't, but I mean, there is going to have to be a massive stim. I mean, you know, it's clear from what we've heard at the committee from both economists, from the Fiscal Advisory Council yeah. and from the representatives of small business, there's going to have to be a massive stimulus. And is that not the whole point, though, that there has to be priorities? And while it's very sad for Siobhan and Mayo and many other people who are losing vast sums of money that they have saved up to go on holidays, that that's just one of the downsides or the unfortunate <laughs> side effects of COVID-19. And we, yes, and we just have to accept one, it. But one of the sectors that we have to compensate and one of the sectors that we have to get off their knees is that the hospitality sector, the tourist sector in Ireland, because we're not having tourists coming in, partly because of the confusion. And again, you talked about confusion between law and recommendation. Mm. Exactly the same confusion exists with regard to quarantining in Ireland. People who want to come to Ireland think they have to quarantine, uh, but they don't have to quarantine. There's no requirement, there's no legal requirement to quarantine in Ireland. But the medical advice is to quarantine. Well, the medical advice is to quarantine, but there's no legal adv- requirement to quarantine. You're required to fill in a form to say where you're going to be. Apparently, they ring you up to check that you are where you said you were going you to be. You don't think it's working? Well, I don't know how ringing somebody up and saying, like, you told us you'd be in Bundoran. Are you in Bundoran? No, oh, of course I'm in Bundoran. I, I don't really see how that verifies anything or how that acts as a deterrent. There is no legal requirement to quarantine. I mean, I specifically Should asked, there be? Uh, well, I think there has to be one or the other. You can't have this confusion and this, this, this grey area. Either, uh, either the government think it's important to quarantine or they don't think it's important to quarantine. But like having a confusion so that some people don't come to Ireland because they think they have to quarantine. Some people do come to Ireland and quarantine. Mm. Some people don't bother doing either. Some people
people to come to Ireland and don't bother quarantine because they know they don't have to. That's not... I think that's not a, a very satisfactory set of events. Um, Michael, and we're almost out of time on this. Yes. I just want to ask you specifically about this issue that Donald yeah. O'Keefe is raising about enforcement. Who should do it? When it should be done? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, the regulations, um, there were regulations brought in by the previous Minister for Health. They weren't published until this morning. I couldn't find them. So therefore, I don't know how you can enforce. The idea of laws is that people can find out what they are, regulate their behaviour accordingly. If you can't find out what the law is, I don't see how you could possibly enforce it. I found them this morning, two days, three days into into them. Um, it doesn't say who's going to enforce it. There aren't, they're not penal provisions, so it's not clear. But it, for me, the, the bigger issue is that, y- you know, th- the regulations bring in restrictions with regard to pubs where an affected area's order remains in place. Now, when this outbreak started, um, Minister Simon Harris brought in an affected area's order in respect of the whole country. So the whole country was affected by COVID-19. We know that the whole country is not affected by COVID-19 now. I've no doubt that there are pockets of COVID-19 in the country and they need to be dealt with. But treating the country as one unit seems to me to be no longer feasible. And I would be particularly concerned if there was an outbreak somewhere or a spike somewhere that the whole country would be shut down. Whereas in Britain and many parts of the world now, they're taking a much more regionalised right. approach and we need to move to that. The last thing is, I'm baffled how having a substantial meal acts as a barrier to contracting COVID-19. I, I, there may be some medical reason that I'm not aware of, but like yeah. eating a substantial meal, All right. I, I just don't see how that protects you well, from we, COVID-19. Well, indeed, we haven't managed to figure that out in this programme either, but thank you very much for joining us this morning. That's Michael McNamara.